Thank you very much, Andy. I really enjoyed the three Ps. I want to take Stephen's three Ps and add three Ps. Prior preparation and planning prevents poor performance is where I want to start today. <laughs> so I'll throw that in there. So, look, I'm going to share with you over the next 10 minutes our three key messages, right, back to three things. Why data availability matters. We've touched on the, some of that already. I'm going to cover the anatomy of an attack. and I'm going to tie together the practices uh, beyond just security technologies uh, to talk about, again, how we better protect, recover and detect. So I'd like us to consider for a minute a broader perspective on cyber resiliency, right? A broader perspective that encapsulates technology strategy, technology governance, the way IT services are operated along with the tooling capability within the operating model itself. So firstly, let's consider the anatomy of an attack, fictitious of course, though not necessarily unrealistic based upon what I and perhaps we already know. Now draw your, te your attention to the icons here. You know, Jeff is not trained. He's not been taught to be skeptical. He's not aware and he's certainly not cultured. Okay, so Jeff clicks on a mal malicious link, malware is deployed, credentials are stolen, super user access is obtained, the network is discovered or it's mapped, access management is infiltrated, right, AD, LDAP, et cetera. Security capabilities are disabled, malware, malware is subsequently executed, data is encrypted, data is destroyed, and in some cases data is exfiltrated. OK, so if we if we think about that, we need to be monitoring for known conditions. And in many discussions I have with business leaders, it's, oh, well, I've got a great IPS. I've got a great IDS. I'm deploying advanced threat detection and analytics. And you need all of that. You need all of that. But we must also think about how we monitor for known conditions. What's happening on your storage layer right now? Can you tell me? Maybe you can, maybe you can't in your own IT environment. Right. What did you look like yesterday? Have you got data growth happening uh, with object storage, with what's happening in the cloud, with a SAN or a NAS? How do you correlate the deviation from standards? So that's looking at that whole term of what's anomalous to us, right? Jeff is a pretty lazy guy. You know, Jeff opens six files a day, he probably writes two, but he's pretty lazy, okay? What happens if Jeff is opening, writing, deleting, modifying and committing to disk 60,000 different files an hour. It could be a minute, it could be in half an hour. What about file access patterns, right? What about file access patterns? What's happening there? Can you tell me what your file structure looks like? Can you tell me who's got access to what? A comment was made about the root password. Do we understand that as well? What about, for example, hosts that are data gathering? Do we see printers downloading source codes? Do we see 10 different virtual machines that have gone up four times or 10 times in size over the course of the last hour, right? Potentially, these are the things we've got to be looking out for. And then we've got, of course, we've got the fundamentals. We talked about passwords and patch and release management, but what about archive data? What about data that's redundant, right? Or obsolete or trivial? Should we have the confidence to, to delete data? Do, know, do we know what we've got, why we have it, where it is and what risk it poses? What about things like compliance and prudential standards or PII, personally identifiable information? What exposure does that give us? We heard about uh, you know, mental health cases today. What about being in an air gap your environment or look at a data governance framework? And I'll touch on that in a minute. Recovery testing, service dependency mapping, orchestration, three, two, one, three copies of your data, different media types and offsite. Andy covered that today. Let's make sure we know that what we've got is uh, fundamentally protected. Next slide. So in July, I ran a number of executive engagements or roundtables with 40 or 50 CIOs and CTOs. What you can see in the circle here are some of the discussions that came up. What's happening down the left-hand side with the arrows are things about process or people and process and technology. Did you know from a data perspective that most senior IT leaders can only talk to the top 15% of their data for print? It's not uncommon to find that 82% of data has not been modified in the past two years. What does that mean? Organisations are building data management frameworks 
What's my data? Where is it? What value does it have? What's my strategy? What's my governance? How do I aggregate and monetize the data? How do I secure the data? How do I look at the ever-changing landscape of compliance? What does that mean for operations? Do I need a, a revised operating, operating model? I'd suggest you do. Now, coming to cloud, another, another click there. Again, similar topics. We're drawing a Venn diagram here to look at the intersection of things. Organizations I speak with have everything from OpenStack to containers to VMware to SAP HANA to Oracle to MongoDB to PaaS to IaaS to serverless to born in the cloud apps and AIX. How do you operate and secure all of that? We're adding more technology as we go to cloud, as we go on our digital transformation journey, not less. 66% of organizations are using collaboration tools within and across organizations at the cafe, working in lockdown, being at home. Right? Where did my data just land? Did it go to OneDrive or Teams or Facebook? What happens when the cloud fails? And it does. How do we map recovery point and recovery time objectives? The cloud itself definitely fails. Who's accountable for my data again? That would be you. So lastly, to ransomware, let's, let's bring this paradigm together. Lastly, to ransomware. In only a few short years, ransomware attacks have been evolving from being largely indiscriminate, cast towards that wide net of victims, to starting to focus on gaining privileged access to explore, dispute, and again, infiltrate critical systems. This results in targeted and higher ransoms. Next slide, please. So some quotes from CIOs. Recovering more than one data set of an IT service in the event of a failure would be extremely challenging manufacturing. Uh, reducing cloud lock-in is one thing, but can I automate in silos? I've lost track in the cloud of how everything hangs together. What am I going to do? It's the basics with ransomware, along with evolved operating models, right? Post-ransomware attack, what would we know? Not enough. Talking with the executive is very challenging when explaining risk. So let me, um, let me ostensibly simplify the message into three key steps. Your data is everywhere. Making sure every bit of it's protected is important. We cover at Veritas everything from the core to the edge to the cloud. Data has to remain immutable. You can't change it in the event, in the, in the event of the face of an attack, especially as your last line of defense. A tertiary or a cyber vault doesn't aid for quick recovery. Having multiple copies of your data, yes, though ensure your primary copies remain within a hardened environment that can deliver rapid RTO, recovery time objective. Don't spend weeks, right? But just as an aside, and I want to put this out there, data at rest on Veritas hardware has never been compromised to date, even before we'd had worm or immutable storage capabilities and features. Orchestrated recovery means less fat fingers, no risk of configuration drift, an army of people from te different technical domains running around like they've been set on fire, that's not conducive, but mapping recovery through a workflow, mapping dependencies of a whole IT service and orchestrating it, that's conducive. So test your plan regularly. We look at the deviation from standard for you at Veritas. We look at data access patterns that may identify where you've been compromised. We find anomalies and trends within the backup platform, within unstructured data. Be able to identify and help you identify last known good copies of data. If you can't baseline what you have and align it to some sort of framework, methodology or governance model, you're at risk. So we must consider, we must consider data strategy at the core of what it is we do. We must know what and where is generating the data, be able to understand its value, consider data availability, on the availability of the IT service and bring all of that together around people, process, and of course, technology. Next slide, please. So I'm gonna to close today very quickly with a poll. And I'll read this while you're voting. Has the threat of cyber attacks made you give greater focus to the risk of your data? Consider holistically what you have, where it is and what generates it. Has it helped you proactively monitor and correlate an alarm beyond the security layer? Does it help you optimize your operating model or revisit recovery strategies? I'll just pause on that for a moment. I won't spend too long because of time. Now I can't see the poll there team, but what I did wanna do, and hopefully you can see the insights because I'm not, I'm not seeing it. But next up, 
And we want to take the data that you're sharing. And if it doesn't come on screen live today, we will, of course, distribute it for you. Right. They're just coming in now, the results. Oh, I'll good. Be with you in a moment. Sorry, Trudy, I couldn't see it. All good. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Give greater focus to the risk of your data. That's, that's fantastic. But look, some of this might be intrinsic knowledge and some of this might make you stop and think. Do you proactively monitor, correlate and alarm beyond the security layer? That's definitely a key area where I'm having conversations with key business leaders. And of course, optimizing the operating model. So hopefully we can, we can record that, Trudy, and facilitate with the practitioners as part of our next discussion, uh, you know, some of this in more detail. So thanks for having me along today. And without further ado, back to you, Andy.